month, Mr. Archer does the family accounts. He fights his way through the thicket of expenses, through the jungle of unpaid bills, and across the desert of canceled checks. It's a tough job, but he does it, never once taking his eye off the ball. Well, one ball or the other, what does it matter? practicing with your golf club, Mr. Archer. I'll bet you didn't know it was going to be a water hole. <laughs> Dear, there seems to be a little discrepancy in your checkbook this month. You show a balance of $15 more than the bank does. Polly, here, dear. Will you crack these walnuts for me? Mm. I've got to get this lunch ready before my bridge club gets here. There's something wrong here. Yes, there is. Something missing. Somebody's been doing a little stealing. Hmm? Oh, don't be silly, dear. The bank doesn't steal. I'm talking about the lunch. Well, I'm talking about the bank balance. Let me see if I can find what the trouble is. I found it. Yeah, what is it? You. Me? You're eating all my sandwiches. <laughs> You know, I don't understand some of your notations on the stubs here. Now this, Corliss, S.A., $5. Well, that's a check for $5. I gave Corliss for a savings account. Savings account? I give her $5 a month. Don't you think it's a good idea for her to start learning about things like that? I think it's an excellent idea, but... It all started when she wanted to buy a car. Buy a car? And I explained to her if she started a savings account, she'd be able to buy a car for herself by the time she's old enough to drive. Well, when I was her age, I had a savings account, too. But it was my money. Saved it out of my earnings and my allowance. Well, you know she can't do that. Her allowance is too small. Darling, when we crack nuts, we separate the shells from the meat. Effective nuts. About Corliss's allowance, maybe you're right. Perhaps it is too small for her to save anything out of it. That's why I gave her five dollars a month to save. Oh, but dear, that's not the proper way to teach thrift. It's simply a matter of psychology. And with all due modesty, child psychology is a subject of which I think I have a pretty fair grasp. All right, dear. What do you think we ought to do? Let me have a talk with Corliss. Ah. Uh <laughs> Golly, it's a lovely day. Boy, I'll say, it's positively inspirational. <laughs> inspires me to poetry. Under the spreading chestnut tree, the village smithy lies. He isn't shoeing horses, because he's busy shoeing flies. <laughs> Hi, Daddy. Hi, Hi, Mr. Archer. What do you do that for? I don't know. Carlos, I hate to say this, but... Well, I think your father's getting old. <laughs> Maybe. Golly, after all, he's over 30. <laughs> Carlos, it has come to my attention that you have a savings account. Uh-huh. Well, Corliss, thrift is a wonderful thing, particularly with the way prices are today. Do you know that although I make almost twice as much as I did five years ago, at the end of the month, I have practically nothing to show for it. Well, you know the old saying, Mr. Archer, you can't have your cake and eat it, too. <laughs> Dear Dexter, I'm not asking for the cake. I'm not asking for the frosting. All I'd like is a few little crumbs at the end of the month. <laughs> and so, Corliss, rather than giving you money to put in the bank each month, I feel that you should actually save money out of your earnings and your allowance. Isn't that sort of old-fashioned? Well, perhaps we can update the idea a little. Suppose I match whatever money you earn and save and put in the bank. 
You mean for every dollar I put in the bank, you'll put in a dollar? Yes, that's right. Oh, did you hear that, Dexter? Yeah, but... Uh, but what? Well, I'm still trying to figure out what you meant when you said you were making twice as much as you used to. Well, I make that much more, but it costs that much more to support my family. The way prices are, you know, the spiral of inflation. It... Say, you sure know a lot about economics, Mr. Archer. Well, I have a pretty fair grasp of the field. Does this um, spiral of inflation affect everyone? Of course. And everyone's allowance? I mean, like Corliss's allowance. Yes, of course. Uh, no, her allowance, that is, she's... Yes, my allowance. It hasn't gone up. It's been just the same for five years. Shouldn't I get more? I don't quite see how that follows. Oh, sure it does, Mr. Archer. You see, if you make twice as much as you used to... Never mind. All right, Corliss? <laughs> I'll increase your allowance a dollar a week. Mr. Archer. Yes? Well... If you give Corliss another dollar, that won't double her allowance. And you said you made twice as much as you used to. I said I made almost twice as much. Golly, a loophole. No wonder you used to be such a wonderful lawyer. No, thanks, you, thanks. What do you mean, used to be such a wonderful lawyer? Oh, no, it's just that you're getting so old. Next. All right, Corliss. You'll get an extra dollar a week allowance, and I'll match whatever money you put in the bank. Okay? Of course, Daddy. You're the most generous daddy in the whole world. But if you make twice as much as you use... Dexter, to, I think I hear your mother calling you. <laughs> in the future, young man, please remember, I don't need your help in any way. Why'd you take all the walnuts I cracked? <laughs> Trying to argue finances with Dexter would crack many a man. But then, Mr. Archer is a pretty tough nut. There you are, Janet. All the nuts you need, neatly cracked with plump, whole meat. That's lovely. How did you do it? I exploited child labor. Utilizing your knowledge of child psychology? Mm, yes, in a way. All right, and uh, what about savings account? Well, I increased Corliss's allowance a dollar a week. <laughs> of course, that comes to four dollars a month. Yes, but it's psychologically better than out and out giving her money to put in the bank. Is it? Of course. And I figure on the short months, I'll be almost a dollar ahead. <laughs> Did he tell you he promised to put a dollar in my savings account for every dollar I put in? No, he sort of missed that part. Oh, mere detail. Dexter and I... <laughs> Dexter and I are both going to earn money and put in the bank. Dexter's going to ask his father for the same deal Daddy gave me. Oh, Bill Franklin's going to love me. <laughs> Take a week with Mr. Archer. We'll get all the money we can beg, borrow or steal. We'll put it in the bank. He'll put in the same amount and we'll take it out right away. <laughs> money we borrowed from and start all over again. We'll be rich. We'll make millions. By the way, it's understood that any money that goes into the bank must remain there at least a year. <laughs> Mr. Archer is not having much trouble holding on to his money. Well, Dexter is willing to work for his money. That is, he's willing to work Mr. Archer for it. Well, what an easy way to make money, baking cherry pies. <laughs> it's awfully easy, but it sure is messy. Oh, Dexter, stop that. I'll mix that good. I'll be right back. blew its top. Why did you use it? Well, I don't know, Carlos. I just thought... Dexter, you promised you wouldn't. I'm sorry. Don't you think your mother'd like a pink ceiling? Oh, <laughs> well, it's really kind of pretty, all those different shades of red. Sort of like a lumpy sunset. There's an idea for a cleaner way to make money. They'll clean anything? Well, maybe. They certainly seem to be taking Mr. Archer to the cleaners. <laughs> Books up for the past year. <laughs> Every time Dexter drives up in that jalopy of his, I can hardly resist the temptation to dive to the floor and lie there with the all clear signal. 
Hiya, Mr. Archer. Mrs. Archer. Of course not, Edger. Earn some more money, Vin? Yep. We fixed a flat car for Mrs. Marlin. She paid us 50 cents apiece. Oh, I hope you're not planning to use the bathroom this afternoon. Why not? Because we need the bathtub. Mrs. Marlin has given us five bucks to bathe her great Dane. <laughs> <laughs> the violence I gave cause for the freshman dance. Why didn't you throw those books at me, Mr. Archer? I'm sure Mr. Archer didn't mean to hurt Dexter. He may even have been trying to pay the boy a compliment. Maybe that's just his way of saying that Dexter is a bright boy and has a good head for books. Hurry up, Dexter. Let's see if we can get this set fixed before your father gets home. I'm free and Carlos. I'm just as anxious to make that eight bucks as you are. Did you find those rubber gloves? You know, you can get a shock from the antenna when the set is on. Yep, I got it. I ought to be pretty well insulated by now. You sure you have everything? I had anything else. I couldn't even walk. <laughs> I'm off to the roof. All right, when the picture's right, I'll holler up the chimney. Corliss. Yes? Before I go, could I have a little... a little... you know. A kiss? Yeah. No, Dexter. Don't waste time. Get up on the roof. She was. If you kissed me, I wouldn't need a ladder to get up to the roof. I could just fly up there. Uh, watch that first step of the ladder. It's kind of shaky. Oh! Dexter, are you hurt? This step isn't very solid either. <laughs> and now we bring you Love Can Be Beautiful. The program that asks the question, is it possible to be both happy and in love? Dexter, there isn't any picture at all. Just the sound. <laughs> oh, darling, you're lovely. Who, me? Where's that fool you've been dating? He's not in the house, is he? There must be somebody down there with Corliss. Love her, hold me, crush me in your arms. Corliss never asked me to do that. When are you going to tell him about us? I can't tell him now. He's working so hard. Yeah. She'll probably get all the work she can out of me, then cast me aside. An empty banana skin. I don't know how you can stand Irving. Irving? Kiss me, Minerva. Minerva? Dexter! Don't try to explain how Dexter got up the chimney, Corliss. Just tell me how high up he stuck. Dear Mr. Frank, I can come in. How's the picture? Oh, <gasps> dear. Dexter, come down! Holy cow, I thought it was Corliss. <laughs> it's a good thing it wasn't Corliss. If it was, I would have had a divorce before we were even engaged. <laughs> Yes, what's going on here? Dexter, are you hurt? No, but somebody sure better put a Band-Aid on the begonias. Hi. Pop, you got a smudge on your face. Huh? Oh? Well, get it off. Uh, get it off? Well, you can't right. see the little smudge anymore. <laughs> Did Paul tell you what we're doing? Dexter fixed your television antenna, Mr. Franklin. Look how clear the picture is now. Say, that's great. Yeah, I saved ten dollars. Two dollars, Mr. Franklin. Huh? Yeah, we're only charging you eight bucks for the job. <laughs> oh, the Archer Get Rich Quick scheme, I forgot. Well, okay, I saved two dollars. All in all, I think I'm going to like this Archer High Finance plan. It's making a man out of you, Dexter. And it's already saved me two dollars. Corliss, I wish you'd tell your father... Uh, you really haven't saved two bucks. You still have to match my four when I put it in the bank. <laughs> four? Four and four? Well, that's twelve dollars. Twelve dollars for a ten dollar job. Listen, Corliss, I wish you'd tell your father for me that... Oh, never mind. I guess I should have known things like this had happened to me the first time I whistled at my wife. Oh, I was young then. You should have done what we're doing, Mr. Franklin. Yeah, how do you mean? Well, we're starting young, and by the time we're old enough to get married... We'll be so rich we won't even talk to each other. <laughs> Money sure is necessary if you're married, or if you're thinking of getting married, or even if you're not thinking of getting married. Actually, I guess the only time you don't really need it is if you're rich. Harry, why do you learn so much about child psychology? Oh, I don't know. Just common sense, I guess. 
And I suppose being a lawyer and having to deal with all kinds of different people helps a little. Well, yeah, I gotta hand it to you. This little scheme of yours is sure making a man out of Dexter. <laughs> yes, he'll be supporting you pretty soon. High time, too. You're not getting a bit younger. Well, I'll bet I'm younger than you are. A good five years. Oh, Bill, you haven't had a good five years since 1865. <laughs> Seriously, though, don't you think this banking idea could get to be just a little expensive? Oh, what the heck. Sure, it might cost us a few bucks, but I'm getting a big bang out of it. I think it's a real good way to teach the kids what it means to save money. Yeah, maybe you're right. Well, I gotta get over to the house. I... By well, the way, Harry, are you in a position to lay out 75 bucks this week? You need $75? We both may need $75 this week. Fun's fun, Harry, but enough is enough. What are you talking about? You and your big ideas. The kids are trying to get a job to paint Schroeder's drugstore for $75, which we'd have to match. Get a bang out of that. that much, Mr. Archer? Dexter, I'm terribly sorry. It's this lump up here, Mrs. Archer. Those foreign back are from the books he threw at me. Dexter, believe me, it was a mistake. Poor kid. If you get tired of doing that, you can call Carlos and let her do it for a while. She's gone to the store. Oh. Well, I'll wait. On the porch. My goodness, the children were so disappointed when Mr. Schroeder changed his mind about their painting his store. Yes. I wonder who could have helped him change his mind. Oh, Harry, you didn't. I did it as a public service. What? That drugstore is a valuable adjunct to the community. If Schroeder turned Dexter loose in there with a can of paint and a free hand, the place would be a shambles in five minutes. Well, the children did pretty well anyway. Have you seen Corliss's ledger? Forty-three dollars. And eighty-six cents for you to match. <laughs> Those kids are really something, aren't they? Forty-three bucks and the week isn't over yet. There's only one thing. What? I may end up with the greatest inferiority complex in the world. Janet, suppose Dexter starts making more money than I do. <laughs> well, seriously, I hope they do ease up for a few days. Right now, I owe Corliss just about all I can afford for the week. <laughs> Yeah, me too. You know, you get 10 or 15 dollars to polish a car. We could probably do your father's and my father's and Mr. Patterson's. Yeah, it's at least 30 bucks. Hi, kids. Hi, Mr. Hi. Archer. Uh, relax. Sit down. You've been working pretty hard lately. Yeah. <laughs> Golly, money is lovely, isn't it? Well, yes, yeah, but you know the old saying about money. Old saying about money? Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. A fool and his money are soon parted. <laughs> Gosh, I'm sorry, Mr. Archer, I didn't mean you. I was referring to all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. <laughs> You've been working hard all week. Play a little. You're only young once. Relax, enjoy yourselves, have fun. Well, golly, Daddy, we can't right now. We've got a very busy weekend ahead. Tomorrow we're babysitting eight kids. Hmm? <laughs> well, how can you babysit eight kids at once? Big business methods. The assembly line technique. Centralization. We bring all the kids over here. What? <laughs> Mom said it was all right. And we were paid in advance, and boy, are we rolling in dough. <laughs> I don't smoke myself, Mr. Archer, but have a cigar. Well, when the kids make their first million, I'm sure Mr. Archer will always be welcome at their home. They'll let him come over any time he wants to visit his money. <laughs> Nipple. Bottle. Bottle. Dish. Dish. Second feeding period. Five bottles. Right, Doctor. Golly, tomorrow's the end of the week. Yeah, payoff day. Boy, I'll eat all that dough my old man owes me in one dollar bills. Then I'm going to spread it on the living room floor and run through it. Barefoot. <laughs> baby's ready. You bring in the bottles. Yes, Doctor. Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> yeah, Corliss. Mr. Archer has no formula for getting rid of his problem. Oh, Janet. Yes, dear? Janet, would you mind if I give you a little more money for the house next week? Mind? No, no, of course not. And a little less this week? You mean the trial psychology, the back siren? Oh, no, that's not what I mean. I, I mean, that was a good idea. It's just It's that... just that you're sorry you ever thought of it. No, no. No, a child must be taught thrift. Harry, why don't you admit this whole thing was a mistake? The idea of a 15-year-old girl getting an allowance of $75 a week is just ridiculous. Why don't you call the whole thing off? And destroy Corliss's faith in her father? What kind of child psychology would that be? Did somebody mention child psychology? <laughs> what are you going to do now, Harry? Write a book on the subject. What's the matter, Bill? I just happened to get a look at Dexter's account book. And do you know how much money we owe those kids? He knows. And he still thinks he had a good idea? Janet, how did a sweet cookie like you get mixed up with this crumb? <laughs> Listen. Mom. Uh, hi, Dad. Oh, hello, Mr. Franklin. Well, how do you like them? Hey, Carlos, those sweaters are new, aren't they? Yes, of course. From Vincent's. You're not surprised, are you? Well, yes. Then why did you cut Benson's ad out of the paper and leave it on my desk this morning? Didn't you want me to buy them? Well, I didn't leave any ad on you. <laughs> well, then, who did? Uh, whoever did, Corliss, was a very wise person. Yeah, a lot smarter than a certain cut-rate psychologist. Anyway, you're not angry with me, are you, Daddy? I mean, for spending all my money? But the sweaters were so lovely. No, of course not. You know I want you to have the very best. Oh, thank you, Daddy. You're the most wonderful Daddy in the whole world. Yeah, he's a real live dog. <laughs> I think these girls are going to have a little chat. Harry, tell me something on the level. Yeah? How'd you ever talk her into marrying you? Yeah, she's all right, isn't she? Yes, and you're all right now, too. She got you off the limb, but what about me? I'm still stuck with your idea. Well, I... Something new's been added. If I know anything about automobile horns, something pretty expensive. Oh, hi, Pop. Hi, Mr. Archer. Hey, did you hear my new horn? Mighty elegant. Must have taken all your money. Well, not quite. I still have eight bucks left. How come you bought the horn instead of putting the money in the bank? I just couldn't resist it. The money was burning a hole in my pocket and the horn was on sale. And when Mrs. Archer showed me that ad in the paper, that did it. Mrs. Archer showed you an ad in the paper? Yep. Say, where is Corliss, Mr. Archer? Out in the kitchen, I think. Boy, I can hardly wait for her and me to be driving down the street honking that horn. It's going to be real classy. <laughs> Fragile little things, aren't they? <laughs> Well, I, I broke your base, Mrs. Archer, and I'm sorry, but you got to let me pay for it. Oh, don't be silly. It was just an accident. Oh, but I want to pay for it. How much was it? I don't remember. It was $8. Oh, there. Now I'm square. <laughs> so is your old man. Don't worry about a thing. I'll, I'll, I'll just clean this whole mess up for you. Get this glass. <laughs> sorry, Mrs. Archer. You can't pay for the rest of it, can you? <laughs> oh, don't worry about it, Dexter. Accidents will happen. Well, I'll make it up to you, Mrs. Archer, but by washing dishes all next week. And if I break one single dish, you can make me wash ten extra pieces. Uh, of course, I, I can't break the silverware, but I could bend it. And if I do bend it, I'll wash ten extra dishes or, or fifteen pieces of silverware. As a matter of fact, I'll start right now. Well, it looks like things are finally back to normal. Hello, I'm home. Hello, dear. Have a good day? Mm, pretty tough. Night, huh? Uh, Janet, those sweaters, the kind that Corliss... Did you buy them? Mm-hmm. Oh, but Janet, the money, I... Uh-uh-uh, Mr. Archer. I hate to interrupt at a time like this, but are you sure you want to interfere in your wife's operations? <laughs> Again? <laughs> Janet. 
Janet, you look lovely. The sweaters are beautiful. I'm glad you bought them.